Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel. My name is Layla and this is where we talk about personal development, education, and professional development. In today's video, we are going to be addressing a very important subject and that is becoming a confident public speaker. A few weeks ago, I posted a video on YouTube which was about my reasons why I personally stopped multitasking as well as a work week in my life. And I got a comment under that video from a subscriber of mine asking how to become a confident speaker. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you my personal tips, tricks, knowledge, and expertise on becoming a confident speaker. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. Before we get into the actual tips on becoming a confident speaker, I wanted to talk about confidence itself. Confidence is a key part of being successful in almost every situation. It is especially important when it comes to your professional life. Obviously, one of the areas that confidence really matters is public speaking. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people are afraid of public speaking, and that includes even seasoned professionals. Now, if you're among people that are afraid of public speaking, don't worry. I think that with a little bit of preparation and a lot of practice, you can become someone Someone who is capable of delivering a powerful and an engaging speech. Now let's go ahead and get started with the first tip. Now being able to get your message across effectively starts with having a positive attitude. But obviously, when you're already nervous about the idea of going in front of an audience and performing a speech, it is very difficult to maintain a positive attitude when you're feeling anxious. However, I personally think that the key here is to know what your goal is and to tell yourself that you will be able to do it. For example, if you are going to deliver a speech on new strategies for your company or your team, you can start by reminding yourself that you have the knowledge, the skills, and the experience to be able to get your message across. I think that giving a successful speech also starts by picturing a successful outcome. So reminding yourself that you have the experience and the knowledge and the skills to convey your message will boost your confidence in the meantime and help you maintain that positive attitude. If you've ever heard of athletes preparing for big games by visualizing a successful outcome, that's because it works. Now, if you're making a speech or a presentation about something and it is your first time and you're just getting started with learning how to become a confident speaker, I would recommend picking a topic or choosing a subject that you yourself are personally interested in. Now, this will make it easier on you. It will make you feel confident because you will have the knowledge on the topic that you will be presenting. And it would also be less difficult for you to talk about a subject that you already have experience with rather than talking about something that you have just learned about. And of course, it is also important to choose a subject that is engaging enough to capture and to maintain the interest of your audience. Now, when thinking of an idea and picking a subject to make a presentation on, it is very, very important that you research your idea or your topic. Now, with any speech that you're making, it is important that you know your subject. The general assumption of your audience is that you are the subject matter expert, and as the subject matter expert, you know more about the topic than they do, and they're there to benefit from the knowledge that they do not know about yet. With that being said, you should also be prepared to answer any questions that might be directed at you from your audience. It is normal that sometimes we aren't able to answer some of the questions that are being thrown at us during a speech. And one of my teachers from my American high school in Azerbaijan had this very funny joke where he would say, that's a great question because I don't know the answer. So it is normal to incorporate humor, it is totally normal to share some personal anecdotes with your audience in order to keep them engaged. But the 
general assumption again of the audience is that you're there to answer their questions. So be prepared for that. Do your research well. Now, if you are unable to answer the question right at that moment, because that involves some data and uh, deep analysis, it is normal to share your email address with your audience, either on the handouts or on the presentation so that they can email you their questions. And then you can make a promise on the stage to get back to them uh, within three to five business days. If you research and prepare adequately, this will significantly boost your confidence and decrease your levels of anxiety. Now the next tip is going to be about choosing your audience. Now for the first time that you're practicing becoming a confident speaker, I do recommend that you pitch your speech, that you deliver your speech to a group of like-minded people, members of your community, friends and family, or some other social groups that you are an active part of. It is much easier to capture and maintain the attention of an audience that is already interested in the subject matter. However, so as you gain more experience and knowledge on becoming becoming a confident speaker, you will be able to come up with techniques that will help you capture and maintain the attention of an audience that is just hearing about your subject, for example. And we're gonna jump on to my next tip on becoming a successful speaker, and that is engaging your audience and connecting with your audience. Now, along with being prepared and calm and having a positive attitude, one of the keys of delivering a successful speech is actually being able to engage and to connect with your audience. Now, when you're up on the stage or on a Zoom call or making a YouTube video even, it is important to maintain the appropriate eye contact with your audience. This is something that does not come easy to me because I have noticed, you know, when I deliver a speech, especially in front of a camera, I tend to digress from my lens and I tend to look at myself in the flip up screen. So that is something that you do not want to do. Or what we often do on a Zoom call is we tend to look at ourselves instead of looking at the participants of the meeting. So eye contact is one of the key elements of delivering a successful speech. Now, you do not need to over impress your audience once you see them and once you're up on the stage or in front of a camera because your audience is already there because they're either impressed by the work that you have done, it's either your credentials or maybe a biography that was very impressive to them. So you yourself are already enough because you have already persuaded these people to be there and to listen to you. Keeping that in mind will help you be confident in front of them and remember that they're there to listen to you specifically. Another key point when it comes to engaging and connecting to your audience is interjecting humor and personal anecdotes into your speech. Now this is something that I personally am not good at because I have a poor sense of humor, especially when it comes to like different cultures and languages because every culture has jokes and an understanding of a sense of humor of their own and I struggle with this big time so I always try to avoid making jokes because I'm afraid that certain things might come across as offensive and all that so I would be careful with this one so do make sure that you are familiar with the culture of the people that are going to be present at your speech as well. And if you sense that your audience is already losing interest in your speech, there is an option of cutting your speech short and starting a Q&A session because people are always more interested in getting answers to their personal questions. And also don't forget to ask your audience questions that are designed to fit their interest. And ladies and gentlemen, the last thing that we're going to talk about in today's video is something very, very simple, but something that we oftentimes ignore simply because we trust technology. And my last tip is making a paper copy of all of your presentations and your speech the day before your speech. Despite the fact that we have technology and PowerPoints and big screens and all that, you never know when things might go wrong. You never know when the IT guy might be too 
too distracted uh, and might forget to put your presentation up on the screen, especially for first time performers. I think that it's important to have your speech printed out as a handout so that you don't get too nervous if things go wrong so that you can have a backup plan that you can use to make sure that you do not get any more anxious than you already are. Having flashcard or a mini version of your presentation at hand will definitely certainly help lessen the amount of apprehensions you may develop right before going up on that stage. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is that none of these skills, none of these abilities, none of this knowledge comes overnight. Everything takes practice, time, and a lot of preparation. Even making a YouTube video takes a lot of time, preparation, and practice. Now, a lot of the YouTube videos that you see out there on the internet are obviously heavily edited, and I do recommend watching YouTube bloopers because that will help you see the imperfect side of a YouTuber, the imperfect side of a performer. It will help with that feeling of anxiety, and I guess it will remind you that you're not alone on this journey. A lot of the professionals that go up on the stage for TED Talks, for example, I know that they take quite some time to prepare for their speeches. So nobody is born as a great speaker. Nobody becomes a great speaker overnight. This all takes practice. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I hope that it was useful. I hope that you've learned something and I hope to see you guys in my next one.